Hi, I'm John with the Christian Century, and I'm joined today by one of our Voices columnists, Debbie Thomas, who has recently written an article for us called Reclaiming the E-Word, referring to evangelism. Um, and so we're going to talk today about that article and evangelism. But first, Debbie, hello. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Debbie. I am a writer for the Christian Century. Um, I also serve as a minister of lifelong formation um, at St. Mark's Episcopal Church here in uh, Palo Alto, California. And um, I'm happy to be here today to talk about evangelism. Awesome. I'm happy to. So let's dive in. So in the first part of the article, you list many of the reasons, good reasons, you say, that, that many of us are very hesitant about evangelism. And I just thought this was maybe kind of timely, given that recently we had a Super Bowl where there were some evangelistic commercials that ran and people have had very strong reactions to these commercials. And I'm curious, just maybe even in light of some of the reasons you listed in the article um, or other, other reasons, why do you think the, there's been such a strong negative reaction to these evangelistic commercials? Sure. Yeah, I think that's coming out of a really earnest and I think right concern about integrity and consistency. Um, if we're going to talk about Jesus in the public square, there needs to be integrity behind the words that we say and the, and the images that we use to represent who God is and who Jesus is. And I think the concern with, the, um, with those ads is that there was a way that Jesus was being represented as being one of us, caring about the least and the marginalized. Um, but then if you take a look at some of the funding and sources behind that ad, um, the practices are not consistent with that messaging. And so this speaks to, I think, the larger problem with evangelism and speaks to our, the church's, you know, unfortunate history with this, that we tend to say certain things about Jesus being good news for all. And then given colonialism, given racism, given sexism, given homophobia in the church itself, um, we are not consistent. We, we have a reputation for not having integrity in our messaging. And so I think the first thing we need to do before we even think about how we're going to talk about Jesus is making sure that we are consistent, that what we say and what we do align, not perfectly because we're human and we're going to make mistakes, um, but that that is our earnest desire and intention. And then when we mess that up, we repent and we repent publicly um, without hesitation. Mm, thank you. Uh, but eventually, according to your article, uh, we will think about the words that we will say publicly about Jesus. And I, I liked in your article, you said that it seems to come easy, easily to us to say what we're against and who we are not. But it's a lot harder for us often to articulate uh, who, who we are and what we affirm. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious um, how you go about that articulation. How might you explain who you are or who we are? and what you affirm in terms of your faith. Sure, I, and I think I, we should first say that it, this is a really hard thing to do in a culture where media representations of Christianity are almost categorically negative, where we're being represented as narrow-minded and hateful and you know exclusive. So it's natural that we'd feel this need to constantly like apologize, like, no, we're not that, we're not that, we're not that. And that has its place. Um, but for me, I think, um, coming into a more progressive and expansive understanding of the gospel has really helped me to see like, how much good news we actually have. And it's this, it's this well-guarded secret, like that you can be a Christian and you can care passionately about racial justice. You can be wholly inclusive to the LGBTQ plus community. You can be feminist. You can care about the environment and not just believe that, you know, we're here temporarily until we get to the real place where we're headed for eternity. Um, and, you know, those of us on the inside of the church, we take these things for granted now, like, yeah, that's what we believe. But it's astonishing how once you leave the church, people just don't know. They don't know that Christianity can be loving and inclusive and um, genuinely welcoming. So that I think that's the kind of language I try to use when I work up the nerve to evangelize, even in small ways, is to just present the, the spaciousness, the roominess, the um, the generosity of our faith. Mm, that's great. So that, according to your article, those thoughts are some of the what of evangelism, but also you say we should think about the how of our evangelism. And you, you talk a little bit about the ways that Jesus engaged with people, telling mm -hmm. stories, asking questions, listening. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I'm curious of just in your own journey, um, if you've seen some examples of evangelism playing out in this kind of way, um, that you felt like that is the way of Jesus, um, either that you've experienced yourself or witnessed. So I'd love to, if you had a story that you'd like to share with us, love to hear a story of what this could look like. Sure. So I think my own story of coming into progressive Christianity, I was blessed to have people who were evangelists for me. And it looked very different from what I was raised with. It was not people coming to me with this neat set of like, here's the creed and here's the four steps to salvation. And, and it, it was not that at all. It was conversation. It was like, where, where are you? What are your questions? What are your fears? Um, how have you seen and experienced Christianity thus far in your life? Let's start with that. And then let's just ask questions. Let's, let's look at scripture together and see what aligns with your experience and maybe what doesn't align with your experience. And let's take our time. Let's read together. Let's explore together. Let's pray together. Um, and all of that was offered to me. And I'm, I'm speaking of like spiritual directors and priests who, who were gracious to do this with me. Um, and to just let me wrestle. There was no expectation that after two or three or five or 10 conversations, I would be signing on any dotted line. There was no such expectation. It was just, let's explore together. Let's learn together. Um, and, and I think that's very much in line with what Jesus did. You know, his, his words are always come and see, like, just come and check it out. Um, and he always gave people freedom to walk away. And there was, there was no condemnation in that. There was, it's not time yet. You might come back later. That's okay. We're here. We're, we're, we'll welcome you when you come back. Um, so I think if we could approach it that way, evangelism that way, it would be a lot less scary. Um, I think a lot of people are afraid that, you know, I can't say anything until I have it all figured out. I have to know my whole testimony or I have to know theology really well to be able to even talk about Jesus. And that's not true. It could be just, hey, I attend this really cool church and they're having this concert on Friday night and it'd be really great if you come and it's gonna be, you know, donuts. <laughs> like it can be just a come and see invitation, which then opens out into further conversation afterwards. Um, so. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. I'm sure we could talk a lot more about this. I love this article and I really, I'm grateful for what you've added here today in our chat. Um, Thank you. For those of you out there, um, if you haven't read the article, there'll be a link to it in the video description below, Reclaiming the E-Word in the Christian Century. And then we'll also have a link where you can buy Debbie's book, Into the Mess and Other Jesus Stories. Debbie, thank you so much for joining us today to chat. Thank you so much for having me, John.